mold, bacteria, and viruses. Can pricey purifiers really clean your air? It's overwhelming. How would you even know which of these works? What's going on? Are you ready to find out the result? Yeah, that's not good. Top brands under a microscope. Your marketplace starts now. We're on a mission investigating your indoor air and testing these five popular air purifiers. Dyson, Honeywell, Blue Air, Germ Guardian, and Lavoie. Hi, Jeff. So great to meet you. Yeah, good to meet Thanks you, too. Thanks for doing this. And to get it right, we're teaming up with leading indoor air expert and University of Toronto engineering professor Jeff Siegel. This is exciting because you are going to test these filters for us and tell us which ones work the best. How many tests like this have you done? Uh, too many to count. <laughs> uh, lots and lots. This pandemic has us all asking questions about the quality of the air in our homes and if purifiers can actually make a difference. And they have a lot of pretty big claims on these. OK, so some of them are completely false, but a lot of them kind of have a grain of truth. They just don't turn out to be that important. So an example of a claim is a lot of people say, look at how high the efficiency of this air cleaner is. So you could have a very high efficiency and a very low flow, and that would be a terrible air cleaner. A lot of people rely on those claims. It might be the only thing that's helping them make their decision. Absolutely. I call it the air cleaner marketing jungle. A marketing jungle with some pretty wild claims. And our Marketplace fans are in the middle of it. How is it going to fight germs? But do they live up to the hype? And does price make a difference? The Dyson, the only purifier, heater, and fan to clean a whole room properly. How about this one here? This one has the UV light technology. Mm. <clears throat> it kills germs. Yeah, but I'm just not sure about the light. I read something not good about the UV light. Yeah. I don't know. We have to confirm that. And can air purifiers actually kill or capture viruses like COVID-19? Look at that. Purifier sales are up right now. So are prices. I'm just guessing the least expensive out of all of these. She's right. Lavoie is the cheapest of this lot. The Dyson, the most expensive, at about $800. The rest fall somewhere in the middle in terms of price. I guess my, my main concern with all of this is how would you even know which of these works and does what it claims to do? There's just, it's overwhelming. That's a good question. Here's how our test will help answer it. So we're going to burn the incense. The concentration is going to be high. And then we're going to put in these air cleaners to see what would be actual reduction. PhD students Amy Lee and Bowen Du put the purifiers to work. What we're testing is the clean air delivery rate of these air purifiers. Like many portable purifiers, these are fitted with a HEPA filter, the gold standard for filters, capable of capturing tiny particles of dust or smoke, even ones your eyes can't see. But if all of these purifiers are equipped with HEPA filters, what sets them apart? We need to have airflow carrying those particles going through the filter. If there is no airflow, it doesn't really matter how efficient your filter is because it's not going to capture anything, right? So that's why both airflow and efficiency, they're important. So is knowing what's lurking in our air to begin with, especially during a pandemic. Hi there, I'm Frank from Verify, how are you? Frank Havercate is a certified air quality consultant. He'll assess three homes for us. Brenda Nichols, Hamilton Backsplit. She lives here with her son, two cats, and a dog. How long have you lived here? Almost 30 years. A lot of upgrades have happened over that time. Nikki Saltz's downtown Toronto apartment. She's been renting here for seven years and is starting to wonder if it's time to move out. She's not a smoker, but... I frequently come home and my apartment reeks of cigarette smoke. And Imro and Bernadette Leo Song's home, a bungalow in this East Toronto neighborhood. They live here with Imro's 83-year-old mom. She has a bedroom in the basement. I think it started when my mom developed this cough. I started thinking about getting air quality, you know, about the air quality in the house. And how has COVID factored in to your concerns? Uh, not that much, actually. For, it me, for me, it was. Because very, yeah. <laughs> I'm so paranoid. And because I'm working from home, and the um, room where I'm working in 
is small. So I even bought uh, an air filter, air purifier, but I, I don't know how effective it was. You invited us here. The inspection's going to happen. How are you feeling ahead of it? Oh, we're excited. Yeah, we want yeah. to know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Frank's ready to start. He's going to be checking carbon dioxide levels, which will tell us how much fresh air is or isn't coming into the home, chemicals in the air, such as VOCs and formaldehyde, humidity and temperature, hidden or airborne mold, and proper filtration. While he's inside, we're keeping our distance and following along on FaceTime. Uh, so we'll have a look at the carbon dioxide monitor that's been placed. Yeah, that's not good. So the house is not getting enough fresh air. You can see here that the CO2 or carbon dioxide levels are way over 1,000 parts per million. They should be well below 800, ideally. Surprising. It's yeah. scary. <laughs> what are you worried about? How it will affect us in the long term. Like many of us, Bernadette is working from home. She's turned this bedroom into a home office. So before the assessment starts, we set up a CO2 monitor. In a matter of just 45 minutes, we're seeing levels hit 1,550 parts per million. Frank just said they should not be higher than 800. Nikki's working long hours in her apartment too, sometimes spending 24 hours straight in here. There's a lot of dust accumulating in the door frame. So the dust from pollution from the hallway is making its way to its door and then getting stuck. But it's also indicating not a lot of fresh air coming in. So how can we bring more fresh air into our homes? Frank says, open your windows more often. In apartments, make sure you feel some air coming through the front door, even when it's closed. In homes, mechanical ventilation systems are a good option. And keep your vents on and clean. That's fairly clogged. A lot of times, though, in condos, the vents make a lot of noise when you flip the switch. Yeah. But how do I know it's actually doing something? Yeah, sometimes they make noise and just yeah, eat up electricity. Yeah. But a good, a very inexpensive quick test is take a square of toilet paper and, and hold it up to the vent. If it holds it there or tries to suck it in, then obviously there's airflow. Next, we go from ventilation to filtration. Frank checks the furnace to make sure the air that's circulating is clean. Imro's all good. Brenda, not so much. As we move into the furnace, the furnace filter that's there is not made for this type of cabinet. When air can flow past the filter or over it, it isn't going to force itself through it. So this filter in this kind of configuration isn't doing much of anything. Didn't know that. Frank's got some advice. Furnace filters can be quite confusing for a lot of people. Change out that cabinet so that you can buy a readily available filter that fits it properly. As Frank weaves his way through the home, there it is, mold. Here we have a cabinet that seems to have some spotting on it as well, uh, which appears to be mold growth. Spots on paintings and books too. That mold you saw, Frank, is it dangerous or is there is a little bit OK? Well, I mean, mold free doesn't exist. There's always some mold activity uh, indoors, uh, but it, it should be more or less similar to outside levels. Uh, too soon to tell, we'd have to look at our laboratory results. Back at Imro's place, down in the basement, no visible mold, but they've had some leaky pipes, so he collects some samples here, too. Before we go, we've got something for Imro and Bernadette. If you had to pick one right now, what would you pick? I like the look of the dice. <laughs> you get OK, the she dice. likes the dice. Oh. We'll go with her pick. All three families choose different purifiers to try out. Nikki, the Lavoie. I like this one. This, to me, is like looks like R2-D2. It's like cute and friendly. Brenda? It says it's a true heifer allergen remover. I've heard of Honeywell. We're going to let you take that one and try it out. All right, we'll see what happens. So do they pick the best or the worst? We're about to find out. Hey, Jeff, welcome hey, to our house Thanks. for the day. The professor in charge drops in, and he comes bearing results from our purifier test. 
So how are air purifiers supposed to work? What should they be doing for me? So what they should be doing is they should be removing things from the air so that you don't breathe them. The key thing he's looking for is the clean air delivery rate, the CADR. Jeff says the higher, the better. Because you can remove a little bit and it won't make much difference, or you can remove a lot, and that's desirable. You've tested five for us. So what did you find? From a cleaning performance perspective, the blue air, it's more than twice as good as any of the other air cleaners. Twice as good. The blue air by far is the best purifier in this bunch. Its clean air delivery rate is more than 550 cubic meters per hour. Wow. Because I remember seeing that one and thinking, oh, it's just a big, ugly cube. <laughs> That's always how it goes, eh? With well, men and air purifiers. So what about the rest, including that $800 Dyson? My money's on the big boy Dyson. Those results are coming up. Oh, wow, it's jumping fast. Just look at the other particle counter there. And what you can do to keep the air in your home clean. If you have a story you think Marketplace should investigate next, tell us all about it. You'll find us on email, Twitter, and Facebook. This is your Marketplace. We're testing air purifiers. OK, so if we, we could see what was in this air at a microscopic level, we would see all kinds of things. It's a chemical soup. We're about to find out how they performed in our test, including that sleek Dyson. But in these pandemic times, there's another big question we need Jeff to answer. Can these air purifiers that are sold on the market, can they get rid of the virus? So the short answer is yes, they can get rid of the virus. The longer answer is that, you know, when we're thinking about COVID-19, we're really thinking about this multi-layer approach. And, you know, so, so I think about masks, of course, hand washing, uh, keeping people apart. And then air purifiers can, if they work and if they're sized appropriately for the space they're in, they can reduce the risk further. Jeff also has a warning. There are a lot of air purifiers on the market, ion generators, uh, plasma air cleaners, uh, photocatalytic oxidation. It can emit ozone, which is a respiratory hazard and can cause serious health effects, and we don't want that in our homes. The ones we test are filter-based. We set them up and bring our marketplace testers back for more results. <laughs> We've now tested five brands, three of the same models for each one, including this Honeywell. Are you ready to find out the results? Sure. Honeywell gets an average CADR of 180 cubic meters per hour, some cleaning power, but a lot less than the blue air. Big difference. So can I take this one home now? <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> The Honeywell purifier falls in the middle of our pack and costs about $200. So I would have expected a little bit better for the money. Honeywell did not respond directly to our test results, but says their purifiers are independently tested against international standards. Next up. This one is nice looking too, actually. Looks pretty nice. Looks nice, but how does the Germ Guardian perform? On average, it hits the 200 mark that Jeff recommends for small to mid sized rooms. So it's slightly better than the Honeywell. But what about its claim of killing germs with a built in UV light? Do we need a UV light? So I would say that, you know, no, we don't really need a UV light. While UV lights can kill germs, experts say the small dose from this purifier isn't doing much of anything. You can drop that feature from your list. Germ Guardian doesn't give us a straight answer on their UV light, but says its purifiers are independently tested and get rid of over 99% of airborne germs. We've got two more to go, the least expensive and the priciest coming up. But first, remember the air samples from the homes we assessed? They're in, and it's not pretty. This is what indoor air looks like under a microscope. Cloth fibers, dog dander, human skin cells, and mold. The mold we saw on Brenda's belongings, turns out it's not in the air. And that's a good thing. Wow, I'm totally surprised about that. But at Imro and Bernadette's home, though pristine and spotless, we find airborne mold, and a lot of it. I was hoping it wouldn't be there. 
It's not just mold that concerns Jeff. Any and all particles can be bad for our health. If there's things in our water, we all know how serious that can be. And so indoor air is exactly the same thing. There's stuff in it, and some of that stuff, the more there is, the more harmful it is. He says it's all about source control. So Jeff's about to show us how to keep the air in our homes cleaner. The bigger those numbers, the more there is in the air. He sets up particle counters and takes us room by room. Listen up, these are good tips and most won't cost you a thing. Yeah, put the meat on and we'll see. The uh, meat is yeah. sizzling and the uh, numbers are jumping for sure. We're gonna cook we all sorts of things it. we gotta eat, so right. what could we possibly do to mitigate it? I know we all like to think about the granite countertops and the nice appliances and so on. But the range hood fan doesn't cost that much and makes an enormous difference. So number one kitchen purchase should be a, a fan. Yeah, absolutely. That's another thing I do at home is, you know, when I cook, I start using the back burners first. Almost all range hoods work better for the back burners. We keep ours running for, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes after we're done cooking. Next up, the living room. Most people don't love to vacuum. They do it because they want a clean home. What should we be doing differently? So, you know, we're wearing a mask for pandemic reasons. It's not a bad idea to wear a mask, you know, if you have someone who's compromised that maybe they shouldn't be there when you're vacuuming. Also, people who clean for a living, they get exposed to a ton of things. And so I think we should really be thinking about PPE and protection for them as well. Would keeping windows open as you clean, is that good or worse? No, absolutely a great idea. What's not a great idea, Jeff says, is using one of these. A lot of people have essential oil diffusers. It's really seen as a wellness product. In a second or two, you can almost see the mist coming out of it there. Oh, wow, but it's jumping the, fast. This number is like going up amazingly. Look at the other particle counter there. It's it like, was at seven. It it's at now at almost 1,400. I'm amazed at how big sources they are. Jeff sees nothing wrong with essential oils, but suggests turning those diffusers off. All right. Next, the bedroom for some surprising advice. This is a pretty typical bedroom. Uh -huh. Humidifier. Again, we're seeing that reading go up. So all the minerals in the water, they end up coming out as little particles in quite high amounts, as you can see here as well. But doctors are telling people to use humidifiers. Sometimes, you know, the medical community and the indoor, the aerosol science community don't communicate very well. So we probably have to work on that. Do you use a humidifier? We do not use a humidifier because I know what serious particle generators they are. Jeff says those who really want one could use distilled water or opt for a steam humidifier. Do you really think it's something you should unplug and put away? I think it's something you should unplug and put away. Wow. Now this next tip, is a great deal. So, yep, I went to the hardware store. I bought three things. The fan, a pretty good filter, actually, and, and some tape. And that's all you need to make an air cleaner. And by you, you mean me? Yeah, I mean I'm you. Gonna, you're going to put me to work, OK? Absolutely. It's a do-it-yourself purifier. Because of the pandemic, it can be tough to find a good purifier. So Jeff's showing us how to make one. So let's just see which side's the inlet, which side's the outlet. We're going to put the filter on the inlet side. Make sure to tape all of the sides tightly so that the air flows through the filter and not around it. And there's another twist. So we just made this. It took, I don't know, five minutes. And you're saying it's better than some of these devices, comparable to others. Yeah, absolutely. Not only does this box fan plus filter cost just about $70, Jeff's team tests a similar one in their lab and finds that it outperforms two of the purifiers. Which ones? Really? Yeah. OK, so I'm very surprised. That's coming up next. Are you saying that all of the experts, all of the tests are wrong? No, certainly not. This is your marketplace. We built our own purifier. It costs about 70 bucks, takes five minutes to make, and a similar one outperforms two of these purifiers. Wow. What's the average CADR? The DIY purifier comes in just under 200. The Lavoit comes in at about 60. That's really disappointing to me and everyone who gave it five stars, and it's a ton of people. Lavoid says its purifiers are top selling products and that this one is made for smaller spaces. That leaves the most expensive purifier in our lot, the Dyson. Its average CADR is about 140. 
That means this DIY purifier actually delivers more clean air than the Dyson. Really? Usually consumers would think of Dyson as a very good quality. It's disappointing as a consumer. So we have some questions for Dyson and one of its engineers, David Hill. He's at the company's HQ in Malmesbury, England. The results that we're talking about won't be news to you, but they will be news to a lot of viewers and customers. Why are some Dyson purifiers not cleaning the air so well? We aren't engineering our products to specifically uh, have an enormous CADR because we believe that that's just one metric. Our experts say it's the most important metric. Are you saying that all of the experts, all of the tests are wrong and Dyson is right? No, certainly not. We are, I think, what we're trying to do is pull back a little bit from the CADR metric. Not everyone needs an enormous CADR. Not everyone has huge rooms or incredibly dirty air. Why do you think people should spend $800 on a product when there are cheaper products that clean the air better on the market? I think cleaning the air better is probably needs to a more holistic view rather than only looking at the CADR metric. Obviously, CADR is an important part of purification, but we need that product to sense, to capture and project. Dyson insists its devices do all of that and offers good value for the price. And this model has a built-in heater. If someone is just looking to clean their air, maybe this isn't the right device for them. I think we would believe that we've designed a good device to purify in anyone's home, but we'd always encourage people to look at the market and make sure that they're informed uh, before their purchase decision. That is something we can all agree on. But remember, if you are shopping for an air purifier, check for the CADR. Sometimes it's listed in feet instead of meters. Now you know, consider the air cleared. Look at he's trying to get away. Has COVID made aggressive driving worse? It's basically opened the streets up for people that are into this racing culture. A national spot check. We see aggressive drivers every day. They're walking away with small fines. What's wrong with our system? And what fuels some risky driving? It's a popularity contest. Posting them on YouTube, they're getting some revenue from that. Keeping our roads safe on your marketplace.